reason why they exist. Yeah, so all I'm asking here, all I'm asking you is if you think you can defend the young earth view without going down this route, without going to precept, do you think you can... So, for example, if you were talking to a Christian or if you were talking to someone religious, do you think that you could defend the young earth view without... Um, without going to precept, is that that's all I'm wondering. I'm just, do you think you could do it with the with the science alone, with the foundational understanding? If we assume that both interlocutors have the foundational understanding that their views are justified, like let's say, for example, we both had the Christian worldview. So you you want to you want to discuss that that a fact under consideration can be justified without reference to its ultimate basis. No, I'm saying let's let's I'm saying for example, if we were to both come from the Christian worldview, if we if I were to come to you from the Christian worldview and I'm being honest and forthcoming to you that I'm not, but I'm saying if I were to, if I were to if I were to if we were to have such like for example a mock conversation that I was a Christian, well, I, I was simply, coming from I would simply tell you as a Christian that um, among other scriptures, but just to start off, that Jesus stated that in the beginning, God made Adam and Eve. Matthew 19, in the beginning. Right. Right. Do you think that you could do it with the science alone, With if you were talking to a Christian? Um, well... Science doesn't stand on its own. In order to invoke any empirical matter, one must include, include by implication, the framework of reality. Otherwise, science is not meaningful. All right. So, but the, surely you still take, I mean, you take certain views that even if, even if that's true, even if I grant you that, there, it there seems cannot, like you there cannot, there can there cannot be any paradigm-free discussion of any fact. Well, let's grant you that. Even if we so, were to grant so you that. Right, right. So, well, yeah. So well, I have even a Christian if, who says to me, why is the earth young? And I said, because God said so. That's why. Sure, sure. So let's let's grant you that. My, my question is, because can out, you... Out, outside of that, then you can't discuss anything about the past. Sure, that doesn't answer, but that does not answer. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you understand that you cannot discuss any singular fact without either an explicit or implicit paradigm frame of reference? That's not possible. It may be unstated, but it's there. So I'll grant, let's grant that. Let's grant that for the conversation. Now, let's say that we both for the sake of the conversation, did have that pair paradigm. And we did have justified beliefs with those references. And my question to you is, can you defend the young earth with, use it, with scientific arguments? I understand you can appeal science, to... Science, yeah. science depends upon metaphysics. Okay. Do you think that how, the how would you how would how would you be able to defend any scientific stipulation without some implicit metaphysical uh, frame of reference? Yeah, so let's grant that we both is have that, the frame. Is that, is, yeah, right. Then our metaphysical starting point is going to be God as Creator. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. So let's say I. And then, let's the, say and then, that, then the next step is that that creator is the triune God of the Christian scriptures who has revealed himself in natural and special revelation. Mm -hmm. And then let's say that someone has the belief that they have this triune God that's revealed himself in natural and special revelation, and they believe that they also believe that there's some different interpretation in terms look, of look, the age look, of the... Okay, do you understand that when somebody approaches this situation from a secular point of view and they seek to ascertain the age of anything. In order to do so, you have to have metaphysical considerations. Otherwise, you can't even posit the age of anything from any point of view. You, you, what you want to do is, you want to have a special a case that science justifies the age of some entity from the past without metaphysical considerations, but then you can't talk about the age of anything. Because you're still operating from metaphysical considerations. 
what I'm just wondering is if you could do an internal critique well, in the following are, sense. If, if you if you went to creation.com or Answers in Genesis, they have a number of articles of uh, states of affairs that they say suggest a young Earth. Okay. Right. Right. So that's the okay. con- so that's the conversation but, but, I'm looking to but, have with but you. The point, but the but but the, but the point the point is simply this: is either way, none of these are definitive. Okay. Sure. So I'm looking to have the suge- then if we can we can call it that. I'm just looking to have the suggestive conversation with you then. Yeah, all you're and simply if, yeah. dealing with is an, an interpretation of facts. That interpretation uh, is going to be predicated on your metaphysical framework or your paradigm. It, you, you, can, it, you see what you're asking for. I, I've granted it, you this, it, Darth. I've granted you this many times. Right. You're, you you're, cannot have a neutral. You cannot have a neutral metaphysical discussion about facts. It cannot be done. Sure. So, so let's. I'm just wondering if, because here's the thing: because you can have the conversation on multiple levels. You can have that principled stance, and you can say, "Listen, I can always look. I can always just go to precept. That's fine." But I'm just wondering if you can do it on the other level yeah, well, too. For, first, first, first of all, what you need, what you need, what you need, what you need not to do is try to color the conversation when you say precept. You'll notice that the terminology that, I, that I've been using, okay, mm-hmm. metaphysical framework. Okay, I'll use that. I'll use that instead. Sure. Okay? Sure. Right. Well, then, I'll use that then, instead. Then. Any, well, then you can't discuss anything about the present or the past without metaphysical considerations. Okay. So is that? It's I, do not I, possible. Okay, so I take it. So I just want to be clear. So I take it to be the case that it's the conversation that you would not be willing to have with me. Is that it's is not that correct? The, it's not that I'm not willing. It's not a coherent one. What is you not cannot, coherent? You, if yeah, go ahead. Because you cannot you cannot discuss facts apart from their paradigmatic or metaphysical framework. Whether they're whether they're deemed to be explicit or implicit, do you think it's coherent to discuss facts with someone on the on the let's say you were to both at least pretend you have the view that you have the same metaphysical framework? Like for example, if I were to say, okay, let's just say for the sake of the conversation, I have your metaphysical framework. Yeah. Right. Well, then then you would then Is you would coherent? recognize then you would recognize that the highest authority for the interpretation of facts is God himself and not the interpretation of men, even very smart men who have credentials or degrees. Sure. But my question was, would it be coherent? So for example, even if I'm like, I'm being honest with you, I'm, I don't share your framework, but if we, would it be coherent? My question to you is, would it be coherent if we were to both pretend for the sake of this higher order conversation that we both have this lower order, same metaphysical framework. Would it be coherent? I would, I, I, would, I would say, I would, I would say that if you attempt to set aside God's revelation, then no d- determination of age can be determined about any, anything. No, that's not what I was uh, asking. What I was asking okay. is what, that's not what I was asking. So what, what I was asking was if we both pretend that we have the same metaphysical framework and to, for the sake of having this answers in right. Genesis. Well, the metaphysical framework includes the, the biblical view on creation. And the biblical view of creation mm-hmm. is a fiat instantiation of the heavens and the earth, not purely a simply mechanistic materialistic development from some other origin point other than god's creation sure my question was would it be coherent for us to have that conversation i wasn't asking if if what would will you will either you will leave the the conversation will either be in the framework of the christian revelation the christian scriptures or it will not then sure, it will be okay. operating then it will be operating from some other paradigm so sure, if we're both christians well, no. If we're both Christians, then we're going to be operating from the paradigm of the Christian worldview as it is represented represented from Genesis to Revelation. 
Sure. In so other words, my the, question... mind, the, mind, the mind of man and his interpretations of facts will be in subjugation to the mind of God and how he's revealed it. This is what I would tell any Christian. Sure. So my question to you is, if we were to both have this conversation with the, at least with the, even if we can even call it a mock conversation where we both say, okay, I am taking on the worldview that is your worldview. Let's discuss what the evidence indicates. Now we can say, regardless of whether the evidence could indicate one way or another, we know the answer because the Bible said the answer. We can, we can do that. But the question is, I'm looking to have the conversation of what the evidence indicates. Now we can say, regardless of what we may indicate, we could be just wrong, even if it when, comes when out. You, when, you say, when, when, when you say the evidence indicates what you're referring to is a potential state of causal relations, but mm-hmm. a potential state of causal relations is not necessarily definitive. Sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking, I'm not trying to have this conversation to say that anything is necessarily definitive. I'm just did, did, asking did you. The ev- did, yeah. the evide- did the evidence of observation of looking up into the sky from morning to evening to people who lived 3,000 years ago, did the evidence indicate that the sun goes around the moon? I mean, the sun goes around the earth? Yeah, so I'm granting you all of this, Darth. I'm, you I'm see, not- evi- evidence, evidence is never presupposition or paradigm free. Sure. So my question to you is, can we so both... You- have a conversation where right. we both. Then we're going to start. Then we're going to start. Darth. Then we're going to start. We're going to start with God's revelation. Then, right? Sure. And my question is: was, Would right. it be a coherent conversation? Can you just answer that question? Yeah, it, we're, you're you're going to, you're going to pretend that you are a Bible believing Christian. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um. Now I just I don't. I'm just wondering if I I want to have this tangential conversation because I was raised Jewish. Would you be, would you be open to someone pretending that they were an Orthodox Jew? That's how I was raised. Also, would would your, I know that's a different framework. Yeah. You got to make up your mind. We can do both. Yeah, sure. You you make up your mind what you want to pretend to be. Sure. Uh, We can both pretend to be, you know, for the sake of this conversation, we can both pretend to be uh, Bible believing Christians. I, although I do, I would be interested in also having a conversation with running the religion I was raised on with you as well, just to see how that would go. But sure. So if let's say we both we both take on the view that we're both Christians now. So I'm a Christian. You're a Christian. We both have the same. Um, we both have the same metaphysical framework now. So now it, you would agree that is coherent for us to discuss the evidence. Um, so things that answers sites like answers in Genesis would refer to or what it may lead to, to adopt certain conclusions that the Bible would hold. So we can have coherent conversations about empirical facts now, right? Yeah, it's, it's really very simple. Okay. Suppose you move to somewhere in the deep forest of Canada, somewhere where Nobody is. And you come across a very large pile, very large location of very round rocks. And somebody comes along and says, well, the evidence indicates that, you know, there must have been some flooding in the region that moved these rocks all to come into one location. Because after all, these rocks are just so big that the best explanation is going to be that it occurred uh, purely naturally without the interjection of agency. But that's not necessarily the case. And the, and the pile of rocks is, a, um, is symbolic of the issue of the age of the earth. How did this collection of facts get to be here? Was it from purely non-agency occurrences, or was there agency involved at any point? Well, we both take the view that there is agency for this. Remember, I'm I'm a Christian now in right. this conversation. Okay, so you're so a we both so yeah. Yeah. so it's so settled. we both take the view. God yeah. has told God has told us that mm-hmm. He created the earth by fiat, and mm-hmm. He's told us who the first human was, 
And it, he gave us a, a chronology of his descendants. Yep. And we can, we can by, uh, by looking at that chronology, have an indication of an approximate number of years since the time God gave fiat creation. Sure, sure. So my question, what I would like to discuss is, are there certain beliefs entailed from this with respect to um, the existence of certain stars that we can uh, that we can see the photons yeah, we, from? We, we've we've er, we've already gone over that, okay? Because well, one of the things that you're yeah. you're presupposing, okay, mm -hmm. is what is called uniformitarianism. That the key to the past is the present. That certain present processes um, have uh, continued and were the same in the past, such as the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that you cannot do is you do not know what the speed of light is in deep space outside of our planet or solar system. It may be that there may be some unique fabric to uh, our solar system and galaxy that can have an impact. We do know that the speed of light can be slowed down by various mediums. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right? So now, I just want to be Einstein clear. Einstein showed us that, that right. what, we, what we thought Darth. was just empty space is, is not. Okay, I understand. Darth, I just want to just come in for a second. So I'm not... I'm not con having this conversation to assume those things. I'm not... As in fact, I'm not assuming those things. I'm just saying... Let's explore the ways some of the things that may follow or may or may be disjunctive following. So say it could be this or this yeah, if, if we take on this view. If, if a series of assumptions are correct, then the, the conclusion that the universe is old might be correct. No, that's not what I'm saying either. I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is if – because well, I'm assuming that you're – point. Oh, well, you're – if respectfully, Darth, I'm trying to, but it's, you seem to be interrupting me a lot. So okay. um, my point up. is, okay, so all I'm trying to do in this conversation is I'm trying to say, okay, we both believe there's a young earth. Now, what do, are the other beliefs that we also need to hold to preserve the young earth belief? One of the possible beliefs that we can hold is that the speed of light was faster in the past. I will grant that. No, I, there, don't need, I don't need to hold sure. that. No, I'm not saying you need I to. I don't, I'm saying you need to. I, I, don't, don't, I, just, don't, all, I, don't, I don't need to have all answers about physical parameters in the past answer. All I need to know is, has God spoken about the time frame of the uh, instantiation of the universe and the earth? I'm and not answers, saying you need... Yes, yes, God has spoken to it. Sure, I'm not, I'm not saying you need to know these things. I'm just saying we can still, it is still possible for us to explore these things and come to so a conclusion. If, so that, if God says, so if God says... The Earth is young, and the smartest scientists in the world, all ten thousand of them, okay, whatever whatever number you want, all say, no, 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 that's that's that is incorrect. The Earth is old. Then the question is for you as a Christian: Are you going to believe the mind of God and how He has revealed it, or are you going to believe? the interpretation of facts from men who reject the revelation of God. I, as a Christian, and for in this conversation, I will accept the revelation of God and not the you, scientists. You do understand that all empirical declarations are provisional? Yeah, so I, again, I will accept okay. the word of God. I will accept God's revelation and say that so it then, is correct so but then, i can still so, so then but that's not what i'm that, here to discuss so then discuss. you accept that the earth was was instantiated by fiat creation sure as a christian i accept that right. the, and that it that. was in, it was it was created along the timeline of the generations that are listed starting in genesis going throughout the old testament sure and that time frame is around six to seven thousand and not greater than ten thousand years sure sure now the, the, yes but that's not what i came here to talk about like what i came here to talk about was there are certain things that may be entailed from that about our about our beliefs that we may have to hold in order to maintain that young earth view 
And some of those beliefs may seem non-intuitive, which is not a problem because we can just say, we can just bite the bullet on the non-intuitive beliefs because God revealed it. But I just want to see if you're willing to have a conversation about some of the non-intuitive beliefs that may follow from holding this view. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Why do you, why do you think the earth is old? That's not the con. So again, that's not the conversation okay. I'm here to have. I'm here to have with you. Well, then, I'm here then to ha- get, again. Get I, again, to the point. The conver- yeah. So the point is, the point is, I'm trying to discuss if we maintain this young Earth belief, there are certain beliefs that may be entailed from that that seem non-intuitive. Now, in this conversation, again, I'm a young Earth creationist. I can you, can you give me an right? example of what would be sure. non-intuitive? Yeah. So an example of what would be non-intuitive to us is if we look at a star. And we say that the, some of the stars that we're looking at not only do not exist, but never have existed. So, for example, when we look up at the sky and we see the stars, when we can say, in order to maintain our young Earth belief, one of the ways that we maintain it is to take on the view that the stars in the sky, not only some of those stars in the sky, not only do not exist, but never exist, have existed. And that seems pretty unintuitive. Why, why would, why mm-hmm. would I have to, why would I have to adopt that, that, that they didn't exist? Yeah. Or so the other, you don't necessarily have to, if there you take are, the view, there, there are, mm-hmm. there are stars, there are mm-hmm. stars out there. So how would, how yep. would me observing starlight, Mm-hmm indicate that they didn't exist if i hold to a biblical framework let me before we i will explain but before i i want to add a disjunction so it's either that or the speed of light was faster in the past it would be one of those views that you have to take. or well you're you're assuming that time operates at, at the same rate that it does here on in our solar system it may it may be for all you know that temporality operates at a different rate than it does here in our solar system. What do you? Can you just clarify what you mean when temporal? You, know you say time, that. Do you, do you know what time dilation is? Sure, but I I don't. Well, do not accept, on the level of a theoretical you, physicist, but no. Or, well, or neither do I. Neither do yeah. I. Okay, because um, that what what uh, the rate of change that we conceive of may not be the same rate of change that occurs out in space. Sure. So you can say that so there is a, so there is a, would you agree that there is a literally phenomenal amount of information about the universe that we even haven't tapped into yet? Sure. The ones I see could, and could what we not know mitigate against our interpretation of what we do see? Yeah, I'm granting this. So what I'm okay, saying, great. yeah. So well, well, we. So, a couple of things. So, when we look at, when we look at stars, we can try. And I'm again, I'm taking all of these things into account. I'm taking the speed of light could be different. The speed of light could be faster. Although I will say that, even though we've observed that in different mediums the speed of light is slower, we've only observed. This, we haven't ever observed a medium, not saying it can exist, but we haven't ever observed a medium that speeds up the speed of light, which is really what would be required. What about, a, yeah. what a, what about an unbeknownst to you medium that significantly slows down the speed of light? Well, that wouldn't help. I mean, that could be, it could exist, but it wouldn't help the young Earth case. It would actually make no, it worse yes, for the young yes, Earth case. Yeah, actually, no. Because what mm-hmm. if the fabric of space, okay, at a quantum level is quite different resulting in an exponential rate of slowdown of light as opposed to the fabric of deep space what what are you are you you saying that the fabric wait i'm just wanting to get clarity on what you're you're saying the mistake that you're making the mistake that hold on can i can i just get clarity on what you're you're making is that photons the mistake Mm -hmm. that you're making is you are presupposing without justification that photons travel at the same rate of speed within our solar system as they do in deep space. Now that isn't that un- unless you go out into deep space, and even if you could, you may not have the capability to, to detect what what the fabric is. Okay. For example, have you ever heard of the Higgs boson? 
Sure, Darth. I just want to be clear. That's okay. not what I'm saying. I I think you're misrepresenting the, 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 me right the now. The point. The point. The no, point no. is, you cannot. You you when uh, when you are Darth making interpretations free. of facts, you can never be paradigm free. So, Darth, I'm. I want to be very clear. I'm not. Right. This is going on and on and on. Get to the point. Yeah. My well, you, I will if you'd let me. If you'll let me. So I'll, I'll try to talk faster because you're interrupting me. So again, if, if I'm not assuming that the speed of light is a constant. I'm just saying that if the speed of light slows down, it doesn't help the young earth case because what really would help the young earth case is if the speed of light would speed up because that would allow enough time or not, not even enough time. It would allow there to be in order for it would allow the photons to go from our eyes back and track back to where the star is located based on how we've triangulated it in the required amount of time. That would help if it slowed down. It would actually just require even more time and it yeah. would be an older earth. Why, why are you, why are you committed that the universe is old? I, I'm not in this conver no I'm this conversation I com I'm committed that the universe is young. I'm just saying what I'm just exploring what entailments there are from that view. I'm a Christian in this conversation. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that when we triangulate a star, we can triangulate how far away the star is. And we can say the star and we could do no, that no, by measurement of angle. Yeah. No, well, only, I can only only that only works for stars that are relatively close. We really? aware of that? Can you show me? Really? Can you show me the which farther, stars we the can... farther they go out, the farther the more distant stars out there, they cannot be triangulated. Were you not aware of that? Show what's the farthest distance we can triangulate a star at? I, I, I couldn't give you the exact specification, but based upon my readings, the triangulation of stars are only those that are relatively in close proximity to the farther away stars. Were you aware of that? I was aware that we have excelled you know at how, measuring. Do, do you know well, what, you're asking me a question. Do you want me to answer? Do you know, do you know how they? You know how they determine the distance of really distant stars that they don't triangulate. It has to do with what they call luminescence, not because sure. of triangulation. Triangulation sure. only works on a a scale of relatively close stars. That's that still that still would give me millions of light years though. So I would I would still be able to run this argument. It still wouldn't it still wouldn't give me six thousand. The stars aren't six thousand light years away. So yeah, well, let's let's do let's well, go wrong with that. The, apart, ap listen. Apart from God's revelation, the age of something is not determinable. That's fine. I'm already granting that we're, we're the Earth is young. I just want to explore what entailments follow from that. So when we triangulate a proximate star that is millions of light years away, which the proximate stars are, and we can triangulate. When we so it follows from that that unless if there is a given speed of this photon, now you can say if the sp speed was faster, although we've never observed a medium. If you say it's a given no, speed, no, or no, or it may be slower mm -hmm. in our solar system. Or slower in our solar system, sure. That means it was faster outside of our solar system. That's I take it that to mean the same thing as it's whenever, faster outside of our solar whenever, system. Whenever you are trying to discuss the distance of a star, whether you're a Christian or not Christian, that's going to be – there's going to be a whole bunch of implicit assumptions. Sure, but not not the speed of light is that's not one of the assumptions in triangulation. You're, you're not you're not you're not you're not getting it. You are you're completely oblivious that um, let me let me give you a phrase. Have you ever heard of the phrase that um, all empirical interpretations are theory? You ever heard that? Before? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. You, okay, it's good, one good. in the literature. The do it's the don't have a problem with auxiliary hypotheses for for every theory. Mm -hmm. I, I'm aware of the doom doom coin thesis. But all I'm saying is that the assumption that you're mentioning is not one of the assumptions in triangulation. Well, the, the interpretations, the interpretations, if they are simply inconsistent with what God has revealed, from a Christian point of view, they are to be rejected. And even, even if somebody doesn't come from a Christian point of view, uh, all conclusions um, are provisional in nature and may or may not be true. Do you know, relatively speaking, in the course of cosmology, that Big Bang cosmology is, 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 is uh, in terms of history, is relatively young? Did you know that? 
that it's relatively Darth, new. Darth, we're off topic now. I did not. I did not know no, that. What I'm talking. What I'm talking about. I'm talking about yeah, 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 but you see, you're you're focusing on the age of the Earth. No, I mean, Darth, I I really think right, I listen, really think. Listen, I've already okay. given you what All half right. an hour, forty minutes. Here. We're just going around. We're not getting anywhere. All right, I, that's fine. No, that's fine. Listen, I, I it was good talking to you. I I do yeah. enjoy talking to you. I. And thank you for having this conversation. I just want you to know that I, 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 what, what I'm trying to c converse with you about is it doesn't seem, it seems to be a difference between what I'm trying to talk to you about and what you're trying to talk to me about. I think we're talking past each other a little bit. And I hope in the future that can, we can have maybe another conversation. We can pick it up at a later time um, and we can get to what I'm really trying to talk about here which is if we both adopt this view what the entailments are but i don't want i don't want to piss you off i don't want to i don't want to get you upset because i do want to continue having conversations well, we've already been going around like this for okay for all right half an hour. I'll, I'll 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 end the conversation then i don't i don't want to i i want to have this conversation with you when you're when you're less frustrated i'm not frustrated it's just the conversation is not getting anywhere Right, and I think it's not getting anywhere because I think we're talking past each other about the, what we're trying to con discuss. So it seems to, you seem to think that I'm trying to discuss the age of the Earth. What I'm really trying to discuss is if we adopt the view that the age of the Earth is young, then what follows from that? What are the things that we also need to adopt in order to maintain it? That's a, which is not the same thing. Anything else? No, that's all I'm wanting to talk about. Okay, we're done.